for one of my brothers. Uh, let me just share that. Was it with your American friend? <laughs> yeah. So was it you, Bill, who asked me about the classroom to exam experience? Do you want to ask me that question again? Um, I think it was me, actually. Paul, Paul, sorry, yeah, Paul. Yes. The question really was, I enjoyed maths. Uh, I felt that I was doing well at school with the maths that I was doing. It was when I got into the examination that I suddenly found the questions on the paper were there to trick the students, maybe, mm. but um, certainly didn't relate to how I felt about my learning with maths. Yeah, so this is uh, something that when I first started tutoring, students would say to me that they could do the uh, in class, they could do it in class, but they couldn't do it in the exam. And it mystified them a little bit because if they, you know, they were doing everything they were expected to do in class, why wasn't that translating to the exam? Um, yeah. And of course they blamed themselves. They thought there was something deficient in them. But it's the reason I realized the reason for that was because you don't, this was two main reasons. One is at the beginning of the class, they show you how to do it. So they say, today we're doing quadratics or today we're doing decimals or whatever. And then you do questions on decimals having just been shown how to do them, which you then practice. At the beginning of the exam, they don't show you how to do it. It's very different. <laughs> they expect you to know, okay? So that's the first thing. Second one is what they'll also do is test your understanding in the exam. And this is very much now what it's like in, in GCSE and A-level. A-level, it's always been like that, but GCSE last couple of years, they updated it and it contains elements of you, have to, you actually have to understand it. So they won't ask straightforward questions. There will be a few, but there will be some where you have, you have to demonstrate that you actually understand the concept. So because students don't learn by understanding, they learn by mo rote memorization. Therefore they find the exam hard. But it's not your fault and it's not their fault. That's how they're taught. You know, today we're doing this, learn it. You don't have to you don't have to understand it. It's almost said, you know, you don't have to understand this. If the student asks a question, they say it just is, or you don't need to know that. You know, so whenever there's an opportunity for students to understand, it's kind of just shot down straight away. Oh, you don't need to know that. Um, why is this like this? Why is a minus times a minus a plus? It just is. Just remember it. Okay. And just because the teacher doesn't know, that doesn't mean the student should suffer as well. And if the exam says in its way, uh, why is this Why is this like this? The student won't know. Now, why would they know? So you're not alone in that experience. I mean, a lot of students uh, have that thing of they can do it in class but they can't do it in the exam. I mean, it's said so often that I put it on my website because that's what a lot of students come to me and say. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, thank you. Yeah, uh, hopefully. hopefully well, I like <laughs> um, yeah, so today um, I wanted to show you, I'm gonna sort of pretend that we didn't do the last time. So, uh, because I've got some new people here. So. I'll show you how to multiply the two digit numbers and so on. And we'll try and work our way through the list and we can go as fast or as slow as you want. Um, and uh, if you have a question, just shout out and I'll try to explain it in a different way. <laughs> um, so first thing I wanna show you is how to do, uh, how to multiply two numbers together. Now you might not already know how to do this, uh, you might not, um, but the way that I do it is different and the main advantage of it is that the answer will just appear in front of us. So we're just gonna write the answer down. So there won't be any working, just the answer will appear. So let me just juggle my screens so I can um, show you the whiteboard. There we go. Okay, so we're going to do um, 14 times 21.
Now, this is a three-step process, so I'm just going to write out all three steps. We don't have to write it out three times when we're doing it, but I'm just showing it so that you can see what the, process, the steps are. Okay, so uh, first step is we multiply the right-hand column. So we do four times one, uh, which is four. That's the first step. So we come to the second step, we've got four figured out. Uh, the second step is that we draw or imagine a cross in the center like that. And then we multiply along the lines of the cross. So we're going to do four times two, which is eight. And we're going to do one times one, which is one. So we've got eight from that cross, from that line and one from that line. And then we just add those two answers together. So eight and one, nine. So we come to the third step. Uh, we've got line four figured out. And the final step is we do the left-hand column. So we'll do one times two. So one times two, two. Hey. Four. There we go. <laughs> Uh, you, you've been you've been practicing this, James. I have, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's about as far as I've got, but but I have been practicing this bit. <laughs> uh, any question? Any other questions or comments about that so far? Let's try um, fourteen times thirty-nine. Okay, I'm going to change the number slightly. You'll see why. Uh, I'm going to make him a bit bigger, but a little more friendly. So um, uh, uh, we just move that up there. In fact, I'm going to run out of room already. So let's do 41 times 32. So um, if you want to have a go at that, and then I'll talk you through it. Okay, that's good. All right, yeah. So, um, so anyone want to shout out the answer and be brave? Well, I've got one, three, one, two. One, three, one, two. Okay, cool. So, I have uh, one curl, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so to do that, we have uh, right-hand column. So that's one times two. So that's two. Then we do the cross. So we do four times two. And that we multiply along that line, which gives eight. And then we multiply along the other line. So one times three is three. Add those two together. Eight and three make 11. So we do one carry one, which reads 11 diagonally. And then the final step is left-hand column, four times three, which is 12, plus that one, one, three, one, two. There we go. Now, at school, I would never have been brave enough in a maths lesson to shout the answer out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but maybe I've, <laughs> just, maybe I've just learned to make a fool of myself sometimes. <laughs> maybe, or oh, you're super confident at maths now. One of those two, or both, maybe. Um, okay, so uh, any questions on that? Did everybody get that, Paul? Are you happy with that one? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Quite happy. Um, yes, I'm so, happy. Yeah, okay, so I'll do one more. So uh, similar to what Tony said, 19 times 21, do you want to try that?
What's the answer, Paul? Can you tell me, Sonny? 4.99. Oh, anyone agree with that? Oh. 3.99, yeah. 3.99. 3.99, we'll get um, here, right? Okay, let's see. So right-hand column, nine times one is nine. Um, and then across, so nine twos are 18. Mm -hmm. One, one is one. 18 plus one is 19. Yeah. And then one times two is two plus one, three. So three, nine, nine. Okay, so I, like, I like the method, if I might say so, uh, but I just do it because of the small numbers involved. I just multiply 19 by one and 19 by 19 by two, taking into, taking into account the decimal place and it comes to 19 plus 380. Yeah, well, that's what it is. Yeah, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm using low numbers just to teach with, but if I make okay. it higher numbers that's okay. going to be a bit harder but you could okay it's not yeah. just that as well this method has 11 different applications so you um you can use it in 11 different areas but you are, you're not able to use what you said in those 10 no. other places so okay yeah. so i can see why you did that one it's good because you've got a good number sense to do that so yeah that's fine another interesting thing i've got to learn that method because that that will apply to things I can't apply my method to. Exactly, yeah, that's the idea. So, so we always want to we want to be super efficient. If we learn something, it's not just for one. It's not like a one tool thing or just one one job. It's like a Swiss Army knife, and it can do everything. You know, I would have looked at those numbers and said that they were like twenty times twenty four hundred as a base. That's in my mind that it's can't it's got to be somewhere near there. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> well, yeah, that's actually what I was just about to say. So you might have, yeah, you've noticed that the number 19 and 21, it kind of revolves around 20. Yeah. And 20 times 20 is 400. And how far away is 19 or 21 from 20? One. You take away one. You get the same answer. So, yeah. What a bizarre coincidence. Yeah. Is it a coincidence? Maybe, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's another, you can actually do all multiplications via squaring uh, because that one, by the way, is one squared. Uh, but I'll leave that for another day. So that's the two digit method. So let's have a look at the, the three digit technique now because um, I think last week, last time, someone said straight away, okay, that works for two digits, but what about three digits? What about four digits? What about five digits? And so on. So uh, let's just go run through the um, four di three digit method. <laughs> so for this, it's going to be this very similar uh, we're going to, because obviously we want to use the same technique. We don't want to use something different. Um, and because there are a couple of extra numbers here, there are two extra steps. So we're going to have five steps. But I'm just going to write it four times. And we'll do the final two steps on the last one. So can anyone tell me what the first step is going to be? One times two. Yeah, right hand column. So the same thing again. So two times one, two. Next step. Do the cross over. Yeah, the cross, yeah. So it's exactly the same as before. Yeah. So we're just going to cross the first two numbers there. So one times one, two times two. So that adds up to make five. And can anyone tell me the third step? It's um, uh, crossing the, the right and left in both both up and down, as it were, <laughs> uh, and also the middle one. Yeah. So, so you, you, you've got a Union Jack. There we go. Yeah, so I wanted to give it a name. I call it a Union Jack situation. So we're going to have this Union Jack. So this is where it's going to cross. Excuse me. Oh, green. <laughs> Do you want to mute it?
Well, there he has. Okay, yeah, so I the first... The first call, um, can you ring me, please, in up three quarters of an hour? Oh, just hang on a sec. Thank you very much. Bye. Was, was that another date, Bill? That is to get my car repaired. <laughs> and that's we, a big... We, that, we, were listening that's a big with, we were listening in with curiosity, see? Wondering where we're going to take your date for the evening. And it's a big number. It's a big number, I tell you. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. So for the first step, we have one multiplication to do. For the second step, we've got two multiplications to do. So logically, the third step, three multiplications to do. So we're going to do uh, one times two, four times one, one times two. And then just add them as we go. So one times two is two. Four times one is four. So that makes six. And two times one in the middle, two. So six and two, eight. So, so far we have eight, five, two. Uh, next step, please. The left hand column. No. It's, it's, it's the, it's the um, left and center um, cross. Cross. Yeah, the cross again. So now we're going to reverse what we've done because uh, symmetry is very important in maths. So we've done. Uh, one, two, three. So now we're going to do two, one. So do a cross here. And that's going to be uh, four times two is eight. One times one is one. So that gives us nine. And now, Tony, the final step. Left hand column. Left hand column. Yeah. So four times one, four. There we go. So four of those five steps are just the same as we had before columns and crosses. Um, it's just that now, because of the, of the three numbers, we need three multiplications at some stage. So we have a union jack situation. And I'd like you to notice the beautiful symmetry of it because column, cross, union jack, cross, column. Would you like to have a go at multiplying one, one, one by one, one, one? Oh, dear. <laughs> Oh, symmetrical. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what did you get, James? I got one, two, three, two, one. One, two, three. three. Two. Does everyone agree with that? Yes. Yeah. So, why do you think it's symmetrical? No, but I. Uh, I'm well, listening. Well, the numbers are symmetrical, and the and the um, method is symmetrical. No, the method in particular, yeah. So we've got one times one is one because there's one multiplication. So it kind of tracks the number of multiplications as you go along. So one multiplication, two, then three, then two, then one. So uh, yeah, it's interesting, interesting pattern. And the higher you go up, it'll always be that symmetry. So if you do one, 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 four ones by four ones, you'll get one, two, three, four, three, two, one, and yeah. so because it, for that technique, it's four steps in the middle. Okay, so that was just a, a recap on the, the two-digit and three-digit stuff. Um, has anybody got any questions about any of that or comments? Uh, only to ask if if the if this symmetry with the um, with all the ones um, and it's pre presumably a progressive symmetry, as you just said. Uh, is that anybody's theorem or anything, or is it just does it is it too commonplace to be a theory? Um, <laughs> wow, there is obviously you've spotted the symmetry, and there is some depth to that. The depth behind it is that this would really do an algebra in disguise. Yeah. So this is one showing you is an algebraic method without any x's in it okay so what's on what's underneath it is um algebra All right. effectively we're multiplying by a quadratic by another quadratic and uh if if it forms this um, symmetrical shape mm -hmm. 
I wouldn't really call it a name by a theorem, uh, but yes, yeah, the, the the hidden structure behind this is uh, it's all algebra. Okay. I'm hoping to show you uh, the algebra of it later. But I don't want to scare you yet. Any letters? I just want to stick with numbers. But <laughs> um, if you like, I'll show you how this method works. The algebra behind you need it. To scare me. <laughs> <laughs> um, in particular, the uh, the binomial square that I mentioned earlier, I'd like to show you that because I find that really exciting. Um, next thing I'd like to show you is a kind of party trick, um, which is uh, how to square numbers in your head. So if I wanted to do, say, 21 squared, which would write like that, at the moment, well, just, you would just do 21 times 21, you know, and one times one is one, two and two is four, two times two is four, which is pretty fast. You know, you, you're not going to have a problem doing that. Uh, but often in maths, it's pretty beneficial to be able to do that in your head just quickly. So I want to show you how to um, multiply uh, or to square numbers in your head and uh, where it can lead. So I'll just get rid of all that. And I'm just going to, it comes down to symmetry again. You'll notice the symmetry. So um, what we do is, uh, if we're starting with 21, first thing we do is go to the nearest 10. So does anyone want to shout out what's the nearest 10 to 21? It's 20. 20. Yeah, so that's down there, 20, and it's one away. So again, using the symmetry, what we do is we go one the other way from 21, and that takes us to 22. So 21 is like in the middle. So it goes to the nearest 10, one away, and then uh, we go one up the same distance to 22. Once you've done that, you're pretty much there to get the answer. So the reason we went to the nearest 10 is so that I can ignore the zero. And now I'm going to do two times 22, which is just doubling 22, which is four, four. And I'm just gonna do one times one and hook it on the end. And there we go. So we get the same answer. Any questions? Dumbed silence. <laughs> Stunned silence. <laughs> so I'll show you another one and you'll see it's the same thing. So let's say I do 23 squared. So uh, I get, what's the nearest 10? 20. 20 still, yeah. So go down to 20. So I don't bother writing the zero. So I'm just going to put two. And that's <clears> three away from 23. So what we'll do now is go up th the same distance, three, from 23, that takes us to 26. So what we do now is the two times 26. Uh, anybody want to shout out what that is? 52. 52. And then we just do three times three. Which is nine. Nine, and hook it on the end, and there we go. So 23 squared, 529. So this is the squaring technique I was referring to earlier. Feynman mentioned in his book that he could only do numbers around 50, whereas I discovered how to do any in your head. <clears throat> so if it was um, 29 squared, for instance, can it's we nice. do that one? So what's nearest 10? No, so, so 30, so this time we're going up. So we go and we go up one. So what we're going to do next is go down one. Just use that symmetry. And that takes us to 28. Uh, then we're going to do three times 28. Any takers? Eighty-four. Eighty-four. Yeah. So three twenty is sixty. Three eight is twenty-four. So that's eighty-four. And then the the one that we, whatever it is that we move, just gets squared with the times by itself. So one times one. Look at on the end. So 
So initially, when you're learning this, we're just going to do it on paper. But the goal is to be able to learn the symmetry of it and be able to do it in your head. So someone shouts out at you, what's 98 squared? You can get it. Which, believe it or not, has happened to me. Um, so let's have a look at 98 squared, in fact. So what's nearest 10? 100. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to write the final zero on there. Um, this time it's two away. Uh, so I'm going to go down two, which takes me to 96. So I do 96 times 10, quite straightforward, 960. And then two twos, four. Nine six four. Nine six zero four. Yeah. Has anybody got any questions on that? Is it how do you find do you find that easy, difficult, completely confusing? Um, excellent. Yeah. Confusing, but a mate of mine can do. I wondered how he did it. Oh, really? A friend of mine challenges me sometimes, <laughs> and I just give up. I don't. But now I know how he does it. The cheeky beast. <laughs> Great. <laughs> no one's told me that before. Yeah. I hope I can remember it. Yeah. Well, it's in the book. It's on, it's on the it's on the video channel. Um. Yeah. So I. I, I sort of gets out there that I can do this. And someone said, okay, Paul, what's what's 1,024 squared? So I was like, mm. I thought to myself, I can't do that, it's a bit big. But then I realized that I could. Um, and the answer is 1048576. It's actually quite an easy one. Um, so because of the symmetry of it, uh, I'll just explain because I've mentioned it now. So uh, you see, he just went once. I mean, he didn't know the answer himself. He just said, okay, here's one for you to try, 1,024 squared. Um, because I know the algebra underneath it, I realized that you don't have to go to nearest 10. I mean, you just need to go somewhere nice. So I went to nearest 1,000, which is 24 away. And uh, I need to go 24 up. That takes me to 1,048. So it's the same symmetry, just that I'm going to the nearest 1,000. So uh, because um, I've gone to three digits, I can get rid of all three zeros here, because it's near, nearest 10 is one zero, nearest 100 is two zeros, nearest 1,000 is three zeros. So I just do one times 1048, which is easy. And all I've got to do now is 24 times 24. So if you use exactly the same technique we've just learned, what's nearest 10 to 24? 20. 20, so that's four away. Go up four to 28. Now we, just, we need to do uh, two times 28 and four times four, yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Now there's a little wrinkle in the system. This is due to the fact that um, we count to 10. In algebra, this isn't the problem, but because we count to 10, we get a carry. So four fours are 16. So I need to do that first. So that's six carry one. And then two times 28, 56 plus one, 57. So 24 squared is 576. Is that okay? It's just that there's just an exception there because of the four fours or 16. <clears throat> so 576. So I just hook that on the end, 576. So my friend asked me this, yeah, what's okay, what's 1024 squared? And I thought, hmm. <laughs> uh, but then I realized what I could do is go to the nearest 1,000, square 24, 576, 1048. So I just said to him after a few seconds, 1048576. Of course, that sounds like I just made it up. The, the numbers just sound like kind of random. 
so I checked it and it was right. Uh, and uh, yeah, obviously it's stuck in my mind ever since. Does anyone recognize these numbers? 1048576, Has anyone seen them anywhere before? No. They're, they're quite famous because we're using them now. 1024 is the number of bytes in a kilobyte. And 1048576 is the number of bytes in a megabyte. Okay. I, I, I recognize 1024 as, as somewhere on the binary system. That's right. Yeah. Uh, because when, when we were using uh, doubling dilutions at work, it was, uh, it was 248, 16, et cetera. But we never got beyond about, ooh, thousand, well, about 1024. Yeah. That's the 10th one. And uh, 2 to 20 is um, 1048576. Mm -hmm. One interesting thing is if you ever use the Microsoft Excel, if you go right down to the bottom, scroll right down to the bottom and see how many rows there are, it's the number is 1048576. It's not a round number. Yeah. That's because that's the way it memorizes it. When it saves it, it mem memorizes it as a chunk of one megabyte. That must be a recent version then, because they used to go to about 32,000, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, I guess so, yeah. That would, would have been 32,768, yeah. Uh, and crossways, it's, uh, I think it's 16,384, because that's 16 kilobytes. That's the number of columns yeah. there are. Yeah. Yeah, there you go, yeah. So anyway, gone off a bit of a tangent there. <laughs> Um, but there you go. So it shows you that, you know, maths is integral into our lives, isn't it? You know, we're using all these numbers and not really realising it. And um, it's just interesting. Um, Can I just ask, uh, students at the moment are allowed to use calculators, which we were never allowed mm. to use when I was at school, obviously. And um, do they lose by doing it? Obviously, it's a quick method. Are they actually taking in what they're doing by using the calculator? Do you think? Um, yes, but not in the way you'd think. So, yes, in one way, in that okay, instead of being able to multiply in their head, they'll get the calculator out for virtually anything. Um, I remember I was doing A level maths, and my friend took out the calculator to do two times 10. You know, and I said, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you using calculator for that? Um, but she just become so used to it that she didn't even think of it as a being an easy thing to do in your head. She got to that point where she just stopped thinking. And obviously stopping thinking is bad. But the, one of the actual worst things about a calculator is that it doesn't give you a sense of scale. So uh, one of the things we use it for is in trigonometry, we look at values for sine, cosine and tan. And in the olden days, you'd have a table and you'd just look on the table to find, say, sine 34 degrees. And you'd go across and you'd see where it was. But because you could see the whole table, you could see the extremes of values. So you could see what sine zero was, you could see what sine 90 was, and it gave you a sort of feeling of the whole range of values. But the calculator takes all that away because you're only finding one at a time. So instead of giving you the big picture, it only sort of zeroes in like a laser into individual values. And so using the calculator actually takes away the big picture of what you're doing, which is actually one of the main things I don't like about it. Um, in real life terms, what disturbs me, even though my mass is inadequate, go to a restaurant and you have uh, two set meals at £29 a piece. Mm -hmm. And so if the calculator says £590, she says that's £590. Oh, yeah. really? It should be £58 debt. But they've no idea of concept of the number. Yeah, if that's got... the problem. So you can oh. get reliant on it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, things like we know we used to do. Do you remember when, if you had you go to a shop and something was um i don't know the change wasn't quite right what, what, i'm trying to think of an example you know so if something's like five pound 44 and you've got 10 pound note 
you say to them, do you want the 44? And they go, yeah, and they give you a fiver back. There's quite a lot of stories about how younger people can't do that. It just can't, doesn't occur to them that, you know, that say the, you say it's £5.44, here's £10.44. They go, no, I just want the £10 note. You know, they just don't understand. And they can't compute it, you know, because um, the calculator doesn't say, you know what I mean? So we, that fluency has been lost, and that's what the calculator does. It takes away that kind of general bigger picture and number fluency. Having said that, I mean, I do use a calculator, but I only use it when I understand what I'm doing. You know, if I find myself using it when I don't know what I'm doing, uh, something's gone wrong. Yeah. Uh, a funny story I can tell you about a calculator was my very first student. I'll never forget it. I um, don't know if I told you this story last time, but um, I gave him some homework and it came back the next week. I was reading down. I still remember in my mind, question seven, the answer she'd put was syntax error. <laughs> yeah, so I was an inexperienced tutor, she was my first student, and I said, syntax error. How did you get that? And what do you think she said? She said, that's what the computer said, the uh, calculator said. Well, that's what the calculator said. Yeah. That must be right. Yeah, so that, that proves your point exactly, Bill. So the calculator says it, it's right. Yeah. Syntax error. I mean, the word error is in it. So um, I laughed out loud because I was inexperienced and uh, I never heard anything so funny. But um, yeah, now I understand why she did that. Um, because she didn't, you know, it revealed to me she didn't know what she was doing. And even the answer didn't make sense, and she still wrote it down because she was so robotic. Yeah. But it wasn't her fault, it's just the way that she's taught. Uh, okay, anyway, so um, there's a screen. Just, just adding a comment to that in yeah. relation to your sales assistant. I, I mean, and this is typical now, um, and that is if you give the sales assistant the £10 and it's £5.56. The machine will display how much change she's supposed to or he's supposed to hand over. Um, so if you give the assistant ten pounds forty four or the balance, then that could, they then have to put more in <laughs> to get the right answer. You see. <laughs> yeah, it only throws them. You can't do it unless they're able to, unless they know what you're talking about. Just, exactly. exactly. I've read stories about. Um, it escalates and they say, okay, I'll ask, ask someone else to do it because they understand it and they didn't understand it either. And then the whole, yeah. nobody understood it, you know. Uh, yeah. It's like entering a parallel universe, isn't it? Right, what's next? Next up is, uh, I'd like to show you what algebra is for. Uh, I'd like to, but I think, there we go. So um, can anyone tell me what algebra is for? Because you might already know, I don't know. What's the point of algebra is what I say to my students. I guess to take the numbers out of the equation, in other words, to represent numbers in a more simple form. Finding okay. unknowns. Finding unknowns, there we go, yeah. Finding unknowns, yeah. So trying to find X is what my students often say. Algebra is, the point of algebra is to find X. You know, if we have like three X is 12, X is four. It could be cos three times four is 12. Well, that's not the way they do it. They'll divide 12 by three. But the reason it's four is because three times four is 12 and X is the unknown, yeah? But why do we do that? I mean, what's the point of doing that? That's really the question I'm asking. What's the point of finding the unknown? Well, presumably, um, you can be faced with a problem where you know, for instance, some dimensions, uh, but you don't know, but you want to know um, a dimension that you can't actually measure. Um, you need to be able to calculate it mathematically. Yeah, okay, that's a good example, actually. Yeah, so you might know there's, you've got three of them and the cost is 12. How much they cost each? But that's a bit, it's more like division, really, isn't it? Mm -hmm. you know it's not so much algebra 
Uh, although algebra really is arithmetic in disguise, it just doesn't appear that way. Um, what, uh, so when I ask the students this, they all say the same thing, find X. And I say, okay, why do we find X? You know, when we got X, what do we do then? Open a bottle of champagne, because we found X. You know, it's, we don't, we just sort of go X is four. Okay, mm -hmm. now what? What does it mean? And uh, I'm just gonna give you the short version uh, because uh, it could be here ages. So I'll just quickly draw it and then uh, explain what's going on. So uh, let's see, can you see that? Oop, that's a bit. There we are. Yep. Okay. So um, in a in a sentence, algebra. The reason we do algebra is to find out where two lines cross. That's it. So. 3x and 12 are actually two lines. So uh, 3x is a, a line that looks something, whoop, no, it didn't like that. It looks something like that. Not very straight, it's meant to be a straight line. And 12 uh, looks like that. So if you put 3x equal to 12, you will find out where they are equal. In other words, you'll find out where they cross which is there, and if you go down, notice they cross at four. One, two, three, four. Where x is one. So everything in algebra is essentially just trying to find out where two lines cross. <clears throat> uh, but at school, they really, they really complicate this, um, and they make out that it's um, nothing to do with this whatsoever, I think. In fact, they'll never, they very rarely put these two together. But everything, once you learn this, everything from here on in is trying to find out where two lines cross in maths. So as soon as you understand this, you understand really all of algebra. So <clears throat> it could be a line and a curve, it could be a line and a circle, it could be a curve and a circle, it could be a circle and a circle. But a lot of algebra is just trying to find out where two lines cross. Um, you might say, well, why do I want to know where two lines cross? What's the point of it? Um, one example might be um, in business where you have, you might have had faced this choice yourself where you're trying to decide if you want to buy a mobile phone, should I get a contract phone or should I get a pay-as-you-go phone? Has anybody ever come across this dilemma? What's the best? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so the contract phone would be, I'll just use a different colour, it's free to start. And you might get this also with things like buying cars and things like that. It's anything where you've got two choices, but the, the, the costing's different. So if you buy a, a phone as a car on a contract, it's free, but it's expensive every month. So if we did a graph of the cost of it, it looks something like that. But it starts off at nothing, but it's say 50 pounds a month. Oh, your other choice is to buy a page go phone, but you've got to shell out some money first to buy the phone, but then the cost per month is a lot less. So you start, you start off with an initial cost of, say, £400. But the cost per month isn't so bad, so the, it only goes like that. So you can see at some stage, those two costs are going to be exactly the same. Sometime in the future, those costs are going to cross over. In the long term, it's cheaper to have the page you go than it is to have the contract. We can see that. That's an obvious thing, really. Mm -hmm. But what Matt is interested in, what algebra is interested in particular, is what's, what's the exact point where they're both the same? At what time period is it? After how many months is it? They both cost the same. And that's what algebra tells us. And the idea is, it might, let's say it came out as eight months <clears throat> and you want a two year contract, then uh, you'll think, oh, hang on, <laughs> it's gonna cost me a lot more that way. And most people do this by arithmetic. They'll figure out what it is for two years and they'll figure it by one way uh, by doing the contract figure and they'll figure it out as a pay as you go after two years, yeah, but what, Algebra does is it will tell you the actual time they'll cross over. 
that's the difference. So that's the difference between arithmetic and uh, algebra. Algebra, you sort of put numbers in, or what will it be after two years? What will it be after one year? What will it be after five years? You just put different numbers in for the years. Whereas algebra will specifically say, this is the time it's going to cross over. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense, thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, I won't go into it, but the, from here on in, in any algebra that you do, you're trying to find out where two lines cross. Uh, so, but that's not explained at school. So you expect to do years and years of algebra without really knowing why you're doing it. So that's what differs with my method. Uh, any questions on that? No. No? Okay, cool. I think you've certainly helped me because um, I always regarded algebra as a bit of a mystery. And um, mm. I felt that it was just dealing in numbers. I never thought about this concept of lines and the crossing and getting to the, uh, the point of it. So thank you for that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, you know, People think algebra is just moving letters around in a page in their order and then it comes out x equals four. You know, um, that's not what it is at all, uh, but that's what it's, you made to feel like it, it's like. So yeah, I'm glad that you've got something from that. Uh, okay, so. <laughs> My thing has decided to stop working. Just watching the clock, Paul. Um, oh, yes. Okay. So, um, that'd be one of the things. Time you... flies when you're having fun. Sorry, Tony. No, it's okay. Um, uh, shall we just round up then? If you've got, have you got any questions that you wanted to ask me? I thought you might like to touch on this binomial. What's it? Binomial square. Okay. Brilliant. Yes. I'll just quickly explain that. Okay. So, um, the binomial square. Okay. So, Let's have a look at a square. So here's a square. Um, now the area of that, uh, the sides of it, sorry, will be, um, let me just move that to a better place. There we go. Uh, sides of that will be, uh, Oops, uh, 10 and 10. So what would be the area of that square? 100. 100. 100, exactly, yeah. Thank you. If I increase the square by one, so I'm just going to go one to each side like that, then it's a bigger square, which is now 11 by 11. So does anyone know 11 squared? Doesn't matter, we can figure it out. So if I look at the individual areas of these new parts. One, two, one. Yeah, exactly. So what will be the area of this rectangle? One, two, one. Yeah, the whole, the whole thing, yeah. What about the individual parts? So what will oh, be the area of this okay. rectangle here? Um, 21. It'll be, it'll be what? It'll be 10, won't it? 10, exactly. Yeah, it's one wide and 10 high. And this rectangle? 10. 10 as well. And this square on the corner? It'll be one. One. So, funnily enough, it adds up to 121, which is 11 squared. Um, if we look at this a little bit more um, in a sort of different way, we've got an issue, a square in the middle, which is 10 squared. And we've got a square on the corner, which is one squared. And in the middle, we've got two lots of 10, yeah. which makes the 121, or 121. And this pattern actually happens quite a lot in maths. It's quite a fairly frequent thing that we saw it in the, the it's the top of the plan view of the binomial cube because this is what the cube would look like if you look down at it from, the, from above. Uh, and it's called a binomial square. Binomial means two numbers, so 10 and one binomial. And it's a pattern that we've already seen today. Does anyone know where we've seen it, apart from the square, the cube I showed you? No? So if we do 11 times 11, 
using my technique. Can, does anyone want to talk me through that? Okay, well, that's, that's um, uh, right hand column is one, mm -hmm. um, the crossover is two, and the left hand column is one. Is one. Yeah. So the method itself is formed off of one multiplication, two multiplications, and one. Yeah, mm -hmm. one, two, one. And that is the same thing. Yeah, so that is how my multiplication technique works. And I'm just using this binomial square and doing one of them, the right hand column, and then two of them to the two tens in the middle, and then one of them down the left, the square on the end, or the bigger square. Yeah, so the one, two, one. And this one, two, one appears a lot in maths. Um, and uh, it's actually the foundation of calculus. So uh, uh, differentiation, this is how it begins. You have a square, you make it a little bit bigger and you see how it changes. So if you understand that binomial square, i.e. can you multiply 11 by 11, you can then understand how calculus works. Um, I forgot what I was gonna show you now. <laughs> what was I gonna show you? Uh, I can't remember, <laughs> it's gone. Um, yeah, my mind's gone blank. Anyway, maybe for time we'll call it there, shall we? Does anybody, well, if anybody got any questions on that or anything in particular? No, I think that was uh, quite clear, personally. Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, yeah sorry, I, I can't think exactly what I was going to say to you next. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm glad I'm not the only one that does that for. <laughs> I've only been doing this 21 years. Uh, <laughs> you need another coffee. That's it. Yeah. Uh, okay, Paul. I think we'll draw a line there. Perhaps um, thinking, thinking on when we are meeting.